Hey there, everyone. I am just popping in to say Jenna went and wrestled bears a la Putin style up in uh, Tennessee, I believe, in those them their mountains. So we weren't able to record some episodes, but she did also was able to evade getting murdered in the the very mountains that we talk about. So that's a plus. However, we do want to share with you this one fellow podcast from the dark cast network and it's a fun episode hope you enjoy it Listening to Castles and Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic as fuck. And I'm Alana. <laughs> I'm Kelsey. And this is episode 83 Japanese folklore. Yeah. I'm just going to say it right, at the, right out of the gate. <laughs> so we don't forget. I feel like yeah, sometimes. That too. We'll be like, did we say what this episode is about? And then we're like, it doesn't matter. It's the episode title. Everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, and then we tangent for several minutes. Yep, it's yeah. been known to happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do have a fun fact for you that has a picture on the drive. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I know, a I fun got... fact picture. <laughs> Ooh. Things I learned on the internet this week uh, is that there's a place called Carhenge in the United States. Carhenge. Okay. Yes, it is in. Oh, I just had it up. Oh, I see it. it ah, it is in Nebraska. Cause why not? I love <laughs> it. Oh my god, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Completely like painted gray cars, right? Just yes, the shape of the. <laughs> circles of stonehenge i love it <laughs> i thought you might i did <laughs> so it's so great. oh it's awesome like if you were kind of looking at it from i guess the outside perimeter because it's the hoods and then the tops of the cars yeah it kind of Corda, what the fuck are you doing <laughs> Sorry. He's <laughs> one sec. <laughs> He's being very cute, but it's gonna be so disruptive. <laughs> oh no. Um no, so yeah, if you just look at the outside edge of it, because it's all like <laughs> the hoods and the tops and it's all painted, it almost does look like rock if you aren't really paying attention. Yeah. And then the at other side. <laughs> yeah, the other side when you see like the bottom of the car and you're like, okay, I can clearly tell that's a car. <laughs> but oh, it's so fun. I love this Especially, picture of it on the sunset. It looks great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like the real one. Well, it's not lining up to like the solstice <laughs> setting sun or no. anything. But I love how like one of them's half in, like for the the stones that are kind of the the laid down ones. Like I forget. Like, oh well, yes, one of them was called the sacrifice sacrificial stone or something. Yeah. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> it's a hinge, and that is right? apparently near Alliance, Nebraska. Okay. Fun. And Nebraska's gonna... having fun. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I forget what I was listening to, but I have several fun facts about Nebraska written down. So I was like <laughs> enjoying it. Apparently, there was there's a place in Nebraska that just has one resident who's the bartender. I don't know the mailman, whatever, and her name is Elsie. <laughs> oh god, which was my great aunt's name, but oh, I did never, I did never look up the spelling of it, so. My guess is as good as yours. That one's Manoe. <laughs> Mano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my that was my guesstimate of how you spelled it. So <laughs> let me yeah. know, people. 
if you can find it. I've heard people <laughs> mention that on a different podcast, I think, before. Just, okay. like, a one-woman town. You're like, does that even count as a town? Are they just on the outskirts of somewhere else? Like, how can this be? <laughs> I Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Huh. Maybe it was, like, go- a a town and everybody else abandoned it? I mean... Like- She's got to go somewhere to buy her milk. There's got to be something nearby. (laughs) That's all I know. No, she's got her own, like, farm. She's fully self-sustaining and, like, sees one person a year. No, I hope not. That'd be so sad. No, because I think they said she was the bartender. So I was like, wait, okay, there's a bar. Oh, it's like Modine's and Letterkenny. She just, like, basically lives there like Gail. and She knows everybody. (laughs) Yeah. Hopefully she's not as horny as Gail's character is. <laughs> Single-minded. <laughs> Between Gail and... Oh, fuck. What's the dude and his wife? The McMurrays! Yeah. But... <laughs> How are you now? <laughs> good new. That's what my good brother new. and I do. How are you now? Good new. Uh, it's also impossible not to say, to be fair... Whenever that comes up in conversation. Yeah. Just say. <laughs> <sighs> but to be fair, we're Canadian, so <laughs> we should sound took, like that. <laughs> it took me a little bit to get into that show, but yeah, I just like the absurdity of it. I'm just like, I like it way better than like some other Canadian shows that have been quite popular, like Corner Gas or Trailer Park Boys. I could relate a lot more to these characters. Yeah, I never did Trailer Park Boys. My brother did. He loved it. Uh, I think it's funny. It's that redneck kind of humor, obviously. Yeah, (laughs) my dad and I watched Corner Gas, so like almost all of it. Yeah, that was like... People in it. (laughs) Yeah, it wasn't ever really like my favorite, but... Yeah, I liked the show something when it was on, you know, I wasn't going to change the channel. Well, nowadays we got things like Shit's Creek and Letterkenny we could be proud of, so we're starting yes. to really crack into it in the uh, mainstream yeah. and American TV world. <laughs> and it's good because it's stuff that's like by Canadians yeah. or you're like a part of it, so oh, they're doing yeah. it in no (laughs) a non-derogatory way kind of thing yeah yeah it's good because i mean canadians aren't that much different than americans no no but we're just usually just the the butt of their jokes on tv like that adam sandler movie where they're looking at the hot guy at the pool and then he opens his mouth and he's like hey i'm from saskatchewan eh (laughs) Yes. And I laughed because it was funny, but (laughs) there is no place called Saskatchewan. (laughs) I do that to my dad because he's from Saskatoon. So I say Saskatchewan. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. It's that's a portmanteau of Saskatoon and Saskatchewan. There. Right. I'd love me some Saskatoon berries. Okay, we have some in our freezer that I got from my friend at work that I hope to make some of that Saskatoon berry mead out of, like, that we bought at the store that was so good. (laughs) Oh, fun. Yeah. I think I had it in something. Maybe it was just jam or, like, a Saskatoon pie or something. I think I've had it once before. Yeah, I think I was visiting my aunt and uncle in uh, when they lived in Manitoba still, and they had it in, like, a... Like a syrup, like a pancake syrup. Mm. <clears throat> Might have been. Anyway, <laughs> enough about Saskatoon berries. <laughs> yeah, and this episode not even about Canada. <laughs> hey, we've had ten minutes mm. of good, solid banter, and none of it was about television or movies for once. <laughs> it was. We just talked Wait. about Letter Kenny and Corner Gas <laughs> and Shit's <laughs> Creek. <laughs> Well, it wasn't Outlander, and I don't know. What else do we talk about a lot? Sometimes fringe. fringe. <laughs> Parks and Rec. Specifically why last time when you told me you'd caught up, you had been watching Outlander, I was like, I shouldn't ask, about it, uh, ask her about it now, because we need to record. <laughs> mm, yeah. 
Well, oh, yeah. And you were, I was going to say to you, did I say that? I heard other people saying, this, as you might notice, isn't my co-host today because Diana still has her throat ripped out by a demon. And I was like, still <laughs> other people, like, homespun Haynes, this was, who else oh, was to this yeah. time? And her co- co-host was still out. And I thought, oh, geez. Yeah, same same with Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, it's still like hanging the- on there. I can feel it, but talking doesn't really make me cough too much. It's calmed down in the last week yeah. for sure. Like it's gotten a lot better. Yeah, it's it does sound like it. Do you want to go first this time? Yeah, I thought maybe I could cuz I know what you're doing, and I feel like that's a better way to end the episode. Okay. <laughs> I hope so, so. I think it's going to be a little creepy. Yeah. You know, we all love a good, like, j- uh, Japan has made some of the best horror movies that get yeah. adapted here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I ended up looking up, just tried to find some folklore, like, I guess, fairy tales. Uh, I didn't actually find any of the actual stories. I basically ran across just summaries that people did of the story. So that's mostly what I have. Oh, totally. It's usually, like, someone's version because it's all passed down orally sometimes. Yeah. Uh, So... Most of the stuff I found uh, was on Wikipedia, and then there was a really uh, a good article that I found that had seven Japanese folklore stories that I got. I love those I think, kind of articles. I'm like, give it to yeah. me. What are the seven? <laughs> I got one of the seven off of there, because what they did is they the other ones weren't really like folklore stories uh okay and but it was actually the wanderwisdom.com it was travel destinations and it told you like the folklore kind of story around a place and that had little bullet points about places you could visit that were related to that so one of the stories actually has a couple places that you can visit that there's like statues and stuff about it which is kind of cool um Ooh. yeah can you hear the dog <laughs> oh i can okay. now cues cue dog scratching at door <laughs> or carpet <Right. laughs> no that sounds fun though the statues yeah i should have looked up pictures of the statues i forgot to do that i was gonna do that we ran out of time we both finished our what? notes for this today uh that's true <laughs> so, good on us Pat on We're the starting back. to be like real, real podcasters who are like, "Hey, man, no, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a very Amanda thing to do from Wine and Cry. There's a lot of them that are like, "I finished my assignment just at the end of the day, Professor." But sometimes right? that's just how shit goes, and this was yeah. when we could record, so it was good. Yeah, <laughs> I also didn't really look up how to pronounce anything, uh, but I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those are those things where I'm like, I will do that after. <laughs> yeah, normally it's, I'll do that, the, like, two hours before we record. And that was, like, <laughs> when I was making Two hours dinner, before so. you record, you're doing notes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, just in summary, in uh, Japanese, there's a term called minkan genshu, and, which means transmissions among the folk. So I think that's just basically, like you said, oral storytelling. And oh, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. used to describe folklore. And there's many Japanese fairy tales through the ages or different periods. A lot of stuff, if I remember correctly, said that during like the Edo period, a lot of stories came out or there was a lot more variations during the Edo period of a lot of the stories than in other periods. Oh, that's the most delicious period. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Edo, Japan. <laughs> yeah. The name Mukashi Banashi uh, 
translates to long ago or from bygone times. And this has been applied to most common folk tales since they typically open with the formula Ukashi, which is akin to our Once Upon a Time. Oh, yeah. that's cool. And these stories or uh, fairy tales often also close with a phrase like Doto Harai, which I tried, like I googled it and yeah. I couldn't find anything. And what I was reading said that Doto Harai is a variant form of Dondo hair. So then I googled Dondo hair and I found a TV show that said that hair... I don't know if it's just in the TV show or, like, uh, in Japanese, like, translates to something about the sunrise. So I think that's supposed to be kind of, like, riding off into the sunset, maybe, like, happily ever after the end kind of thing. But I couldn't translate either of those. Like, when I googled them, nothing came up saying what it means. I think that would be... uh a fair bet anyway yeah. it's like a positive closing line i mean mm-hmm. you hope that they all end that way <laughs> and that they're not the yeah. the grimm's fairy tale versions which are quite unhappy yeah. endings <laughs> they're quite grim <laughs> uh as we kind of said folk tales are basically come from like oral traditions and are told in pretty specific local dialects This has kind of resulted in many variations or versions of each story, depending on where or even when it was recorded or like written down. And these can also make it sometimes difficult for outsiders to understand because of different pronunciation or grammar differences. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So many folk tales collected are actually translations into standard Japanese and from like I assume what they meant was like these local dialects and they may be adaptations or a merging of several different versions that were collected when this was quote unquote translated. Even just from like Japanese different variation like dialects to standard Japanese. So I could see that and just with different dialects they're from different regions so yeah people from different places are like oh we used to play that game but we called it this or whatever exactly <laughs> that's cool so the first story i think is the first should be the first three pictures on the drive um they're pretty time. cool They're, like, really old pictures, some of them from, like, 1890s and stuff. Some of them are from scrolls. Um, Yeah, so they depict, like, some of the stories and, like, parts of it. So Scrolling over to the scrolls. (laughs) Yeah. The first one is called Yurashima Taro. And... The story goes that one day a young fisherman named Yurashima Taro was fishing when he notices a group of children torturing a small turtle. Oh my god. Yeah. Like, what the hell? What did that turtle do to you? (laughs) These are, like, all these summaries are just what it had on Wikipedia, but (laughs) most of the sites I looked at, they were pretty much the same except for maybe, like, one or two different words. All the summaries are basically the same. Mm -hmm. Um, So Taro saves... (laughs) Right? Taro saves it and lets it go back into the sea. The next day, a huge turtle approaches him and tells him that the small turtle he had saved is the daughter of the emperor of the sea, Ryujin, who wants to see him to thank him. So... The turtle magically gives Taro gills and brings him to the bottom of the sea to the palace of the dragon god, Ryugujo. Oh, damn. (laughs) Yeah. There he meets the emperor and the small turtle, who is now a lovely princess, Otohimi. And the palace had a view 
to the four seasons, a different one on each side. Oh, but not the hotel. <laughs> no, not the hotel. <laughs> I thought that too. <laughs> yeah, split second, split second. <laughs> yeah. They, we have a view of the four seasons, but we're not in it. <laughs> yeah. Taro okay, that's interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Taro stays with Otohime for three days, but soon wants to go back to his village and see his aging mother, so he requests permission to leave. The princess says that she's sorry to see him go, but wishes him well and gives him a mysterious box called Tamate Beiko, which will protect him from harm, but which she tells him never to open. I feel very like Pandora's box about it. Yes, <sighs> or the Dybbuk box. <laughs> mm, yeah. Damn. So Taro grabs the box, jumps on the back of the same turtle that had brought him there, and soon is at the seashore. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when he gets home, everything has changed. His home is gone, his mother has vanished, and the people he knew are nowhere to be seen. He asks if anybody knows a man named Yurashima Taro. They answer that they had heard someone of that name had vanished at sea long ago. And that was him. So he, uh, now he gets word that like he disappeared. So oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> you're like, no, you're not getting it. It's like, whoa, what? That's like, that's like the 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 classic urban legend where you know someone's picked up by a car or whatever, and you, oh, she left her sweater in my car, and but she's been dead for five years. Yeah, <laughs> like. That's really, really unsettling. <laughs> yeah. So Taro discovers that 300 years have passed since the day he left for the bottom of the sea. Oh and, my god. <laughs> yeah. And it felt like three days to him. Uh, oh. Struck by grief, he absentmindedly opens the box the princess had given him, from which bursts forth a cloud of white smoke. He is suddenly aged, his beard long and white, and his back bent. And from the sea comes the sad, sweet voice of the princess. I told you not to open that box. In it was your old age. Oh, and that's, that's like 300 that's... years catch up with him? Yeah, that's the story, or the summary yeah. of the story, I guess. And... Uh, one source I read said that the tragic tale of Yurashima Taro is one of the oldest Japanese folklore stories and has circulated as early as the 5th century and has many, many different versions. Uh, it does sound like a classic, like a Greek. Yeah. It definitely has a very easy to spot um lesson <laughs> this yeah. is what you did wrong this is what you should have <laughs> done kind of back. yeah and like you're or i don't know well he like opened it he definitely wasn't supposed to and he probably could have still lived there and been happy right but yeah it's still very, it's very tragic anyway you slice it i guess <laughs> yeah so some of the versions include ones where only a few decades have passed instead of the total of 300 years, oh, but still okay. like his family is basically gone. Yeah. And other versions say that once Taro opened the box, he aged dramatically and then just basically dropped dead. Like, just boom, oh, no. died. He dust. Because uh, it's <laughs> dust 300 it. years. Uh oh, yeah. And then opinions about what the possible moral, because typically in, like, Western fairy tales, everything has, like, a moral to the story. Yeah. Uh, there's differing opinions about what a possible moral of the tale may be. Um, and some just simply believe it doesn't really have one. <laughs> just because it... Like, well, I It's like, I, I don't guess. open the box, but that's about the only thing. I suppose it is a bit, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, because yeah. it doesn't sound like he could have avoided being brought to the future. Kind of like a Rumpelstiltskin sort of situation. Yeah. No, that's not the one. What's the one where he's asleep for a long time? Um, Van Winkle? I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> yes, no Rip idea. Van Winkle. 
He like falls asleep forever. Never mind. No, it, I don't know. That one's pretty well known too, but I can't remember the details, so I'll shut up. <laughs> so this was the one that was uh, I found on that travel website. So it said that the Dragon Palace and Princess Otohime are originally used as or are occasionally used as design motifs on souvenir packaging. So their like likeness has been used. Well, yeah. Taro himself has appeared in video games and different anime. And the supposed spirit of Yurashima Taro is enshrined at a rather remote Yurashima shrine in northern Kyoto province. And Kyoto. That's famous yes. from the Kyoto Accords. Yeah. So there's supposed to be a shrine there that holds his supposed spirit. And at this shrine, there's a statue of him as well as Orohime. Uh They're like each have their own statue there. There's okay. also a bunch of stuff talking about like where it says that Taro um, says he's from and stuff. There's also supposed to be things. Didn't really get into it because there was like a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> Fair um, enough. Yeah, it said that the... Uh, oh, this one. The... Kagoshima Prefecture at the southern tip of Japan is said to be Taro's birthplace. The Ryugu Shrine at Ibutsuki, just outside of Kagoshima City, contains beautifully lacquered structures inspired by descriptions of the Dragon Palace. Ooh. Yeah. Sounds pretty cool. I'm like, another thing I could have looked up pictures for. <laughs> didn't. <laughs> I'll try and find stuff for the website. Uh, oh, yes. But yeah, I that's like the that. first three are kind of the first three pictures in the driver like to do with oh. the story. It's kind of cool. Yeah, the like traditional Japanese yeah. drawings or art. Or oh, yeah. yeah like, totally. It's kind of cool. And the next one, I'd say probably has the most variations of it uh and that is well the first variation or i guess main one is called tesuru no onigishi which translates to crane's return of a favor and cranes okay. yeah which, as you could kind of assume, it's the story of a crane who returns a favor to a man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. as one does. <laughs> yeah. Lend favors to cranes and other birds. <laughs> yeah. So, according to Japanese scholar Saki Kiyogo, the tale is one of the best-known tales in Japan about supernatural and enchanted spouses. Oh, okay. Many... <laughs> There's many versions of it, and each is basically about a guy marrying something that turns out to not be human. Oh, so also sounds like Greek stories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first variation, or I guess version, is just called The Crane Wife, and... Its version says that there was a man who marries the crane that returns uh, the favor is known as Tesoro Nayobo, or Crane Wife. And in the Crane Wife story, oh. the man marries a woman who is in fact a crane disguised as a woman, as a human. And okay. <laughs> yeah. These are all just like little synopses um, of the different Weird. versions. To make money, the crane wife plucks her own feathers to weave silk uh, brocade, which the man sells. Mm. But she becomes increasingly ill as she does so. And when the man mm. discovers his wife's true identity and the nature of her illness, he is devastated by the truth and he demands her to stop. And... <sighs> 
Okay. Yeah. As uh, her response is that she has been doing it for love for them together. And the man says that love exists without sacrifice, but he is wrong. And Mm -hmm. it just said that he who lives without sacrifices for someone else doesn't deserve to be with a crane. And that's the end of that version, I guess. Oh, damn. Um, (laughs) That was pretty savage. Yeah. If you don't, (laughs) that was like, um, I was listening to a list about famous quotes the other day. And Mm. there's the one that's, I think it was Mae West. Because there was one quote on the list that was also Marilyn Monroe. So now I'm trying to remember, but it was like, it goes kind of like, if you can't stand me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, it's kind of sassy <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Uh, reminded me of that. <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> so I at first I wasn't going to get into all the versions of this story, but they're all kind of just just weird enough that you kind of have to talk about them so yeah (laughs) or this or it could have been this or this yeah uh there's one version that's called the copper pheasant wife and in this one the wife doesn't weave cloth but instead provides her husband a plume to feather an arrow shaft the husband is rewarded for don't really know what that means uh the wife is not okay. <laughs> yeah huh oh i like missed the oh i missed the original story gordo hi oh did you yeah I, the crane wife was like one version that's why it probably didn't make sense oh. okay sorry i have to tell the original version it has the most information Oh, um, okay, so that was most of the variation. Yeah. Okay. The crane wife, that was a variation. That's why I didn't have a lot of information, because it was only telling the differences between the two. Oh, <laughs> I was like, yeah. why does this seem so short? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the crane's return of a favor, the Tesoro no Onagoshi, is a man saves a crane that had been shot down by hunters, And that night, a beautiful girl appears at the man's door and tells him that she is his wife. Like, every guy's dream. Okay. (laughs) So a woman shows up at the door, I'm your wife. And he didn't even mail order for that bride. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The man tells her that he is not wealthy enough to support them, but she tells him that she has a bag of rice that will fill their stomachs. And every day, the rice bag never goes down in the sack and it always stays full. The next day, she tells the man that she's going in in a room to make something, and that he is not to come in until she is finished. So seven days have passed by, and she finally comes out with a beautiful piece of clothing, but she is very skinny. She tells the man to go to the markets the next morning and to sell this for a very large price. So, yeah. He comes back home and tells her that he sold it for a very good price. After that, they are now wealthy. And the woman then goes back into the room, telling him once again not to come in until she's finished. But the man's curiosity takes over and he peeks in, realizing that the woman is the crane whom he had saved. And when the crane sees that the man has found out her true identity, she says that she cannot stay there anymore and flies away to never come back. No, you're not supposed to look. Yeah. Everything was fine. <laughs> if it's yeah. Not, if it's not a bad, <laughs> dirty secret, then I don't need to know. <laughs> right? Sitting um, in a room, like, freaking making clothing. Um, yeah, which she was better at as a crane, I take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the crane wife, like, variation is... Uh, Instead of her actually being a crane, yeah, it's the that part's the same. But she's plucking out her own feathers to make that 
she becomes ill um he demands her to stop so instead of the one where she says like the original one where she says she just can't stay this one he's demanding her to stop and she says that she can't um yeah yeah because that's her livelihood (laughs) um so the other variations the copper pheasant wife the wife doesn't weave cloth but instead provides her husband a plume to feather an arrow shaft the husband is rewarded for and the wife is not looked in on by the husband like in the room where she's working like she is in the crane wife instead like in crane's return of a favor the pheasant wife leaves as soon as the favor is returned so that one oh. it's like to do with arrows there's a bird wife version <laughs> that's an injured wild goose that the man ends up saving and in this story the wife weaves without prompting from the husband and one day she disappears but he finds her in a local pond and this is where she explains that she's trying to repay his kindness and asks him to use the money from selling the cloth to take care of their children before she flies away so that when they had kids yeah oh (laughs) uh there's oh, one called Goslings. The... Yeah, exactly. The, uh, an injured wild goose. Um, My mom's um, married name now is the, like the French word for gosling. Goslin. <laughs> oh, well. Also, I heard a thing the other day where a translation of penguin was business goose. <laughs> <laughs> business goose i love it well they do look like they were in like a little suit or something (laughs) i love it business (laughs) stuck in my head (laughs) that's so great like (laughs) i love languages (laughs) i know i love the weird little things nuggets i learned Mm -hmm. from podcasts and other weird stuff (laughs) uh just a few more few more variations on this one there's a fox wife they get increasingly oh. weird you'll thank me after um the fox wife where it's a fox that the man helps and the fox shows up on the man's doorstep to become his bride um in this tale the fox does not weave but instead uses her tail to sweep the floors and oh. um <laughs> A little bit of a difference, again, with this one is upon discovering his wife's identity, her being a fox, the husband drives her away instead of her leaving. He he makes her leave. She kept the floors clean with her tail. Why would you drive away a wife like that? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Honestly. (laughs) And she's a foxy lady. (laughs) Yeah. A kitsune. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Yeah, that came up a lot. Um, yes, which is a nine-tailed fox, if you guys don't know. Yeah. I don't think we've talked about them on here. I think I have talked about them with my daughter. <laughs> yeah. There's not um, Sonic or whatever. Okay. Tails or... I don't yeah. know. Never mind. <laughs> I know. I, I used to play Sonic. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. In one version called The Clam Wife... He marries clam. <laughs> clam wife. Oh my god. Uh, a man finds a beautiful woman mysteriously appear on his doorway. They become married, and the wife cooks the husband a delicious bean soup every day. <laughs> oh my god. Every day. Every day. Bean soup. He, he must peeks be the in. the most regular <laughs> person on the planet. Just so farty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So instead of her him like peeking on her weaving, he peeks in on her cooking and discovers that she's urinating clam juice into the soup. So he chases her away. Because she's a clam, but she's peeing into the soup. I don't know where to go with that. Right? Too many things to say. That's why I'm like, oh, every one of these needs to be talked about. Peeing clam soup. She just, was she a clam at the time? 
Yeah, I think oh, so. God. Oh god. I hope not her just popping a squat over the stove. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a different kind of clam juice. <laughs> just uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is no Hansel and Gretel. This is not safe no. for work. <laughs> uh there is a version called the fish wife. Where a okay, fisherman well, those I've heard of. They sound more yeah. normal. Um, the fisherman, or a fisherman, releases a fish that he does not need to eat back into the water because he does okay. not have a greedy nature. As a result, a beautiful woman appears at the fisherman's door and begs to be his wife. The wife cooks the husband oh. a bean soup, and it is so good <laughs> that he is suspicious of how she makes it. So he spies on her while she's cooking and discovers she urinates in the soup. <laughs> So much. Did they just not have no salt and this was the Oh, I don't even nope. <laughs> nope. Uh later at dinner he alludes <sighs> to her cooking method. When the wife realizes he knows, she says she must return to her former home and bids her husband visit her at the pond the following day. When he does, she explains how she was a fit how she was a fish he saved and had wanted to repay the favor. She disappears into the water, leaving him a box of gold and silver. Hey! I mean, you ate pea soup? Literal pea soup? (laughs) (laughs) No! God. Fish pea, clam pea, who knows? Uh, That one was surprising. I was ready to, like, facepalm again, and then you're like, well, (laughs) then at least you got gold and silver out of it yeah there's your divorce settlement (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's your compensation Um, (laughs) the last one is the snake wife in which a beautiful woman appears in a widower's doorway asking to stay the night okay da 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 they become married and the wife becomes (laughs) pregnant Yada, yada, yada. You well, there's no heard, other yeah. information on this one. So I'm like, what is, like, it's what she has to say the night, and then it's just the next sentence says, they become married, and now the wife is pregnant. And then um, we can tell you've still been watching a lot of Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. Yada, 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 yada. Never heard from him again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the wife warns the husband not to look in on the hut where she intends to have their child. So that okay. was a bit different. He looks and discovers a snake. The wife says that the husband has seen her true form and she must leave. She ends up giving her child her two eyeballs for nourishment as she cannot be there to feed it. Oh my god. And no. when the son grows of age, he takes care of his blind mother. That's oh. all I have. So those are a bunch of different versions about the crane wife. Or the crane who returns a favor. And most this of them have a- nothing to do with a crane. But they're like half the time normal people. Like a Princess Fiona sort of situation where she's like only an ogre at night. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. It seems weird that they couldn't get past this. I'm only <laughs> a clam when I'm making soup. <laughs> Uh, I told you not to look at me because don't just, look at me without makeup on. I'm a clam. Uh, <laughs> don't you, you can just not want your spouse to watch you giving birth because you just don't want them to see that. It had nothing to do with me being a snake or not. <laughs> I just asked Pat to stay away, but he didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I do have one more story. Do you? Nice. And that, that is... So fun. <laughs> I know. I should have ended with that one. Oh. <laughs> this yes. one's pretty good, too. The George Costanza, where he en- ends on a high note and leaves the meeting after... He... Yeah. I don't know. You haven't got to that one? He's like, he tells a good joke, and then that's when he wants to leave the, the, the meeting, because he wants to go out on a high note. Oh, yes. He doesn't yes. want to be like say something stupid after that so he just leaves <laughs> yeah. um yeah. this one also has a bunch of variations 
Um, and this is <laughs> called The Crab and the Monkey. And it has an original version that we know of that's called The Monkey Crab Battle. It sounds like a rap battle. Uh... <laughs> Dance on a battle Kong level, <laughs> like yeah, the dance off between a monkey and a crab. Um, There's sometimes crabs are your bosses in that. <laughs> yeah, you have to fucking anyway. Uh, so the I think it's the monkey crab battle is translated to Saru Kani Gossen. Um, there's other versions, so that's like the first one. The monkey crab battle is the original one. And then mm. the ones called like the crab and the monkey and everything, as well as the quarrel of the monkey and the crab. Um, yeah, there's like different versions of it. it. Is the story of a sly monkey who kills a crab and later is killed by the crab's offspring in revenge. King Krabby yeah. Jr. <laughs> um, so the synopsis of this one was while out walking, a crab finds a rice ball. And a oh. sly monkey persuades the crab to trade the rice ball for a persimmon seed. And that seems like a bad trade. <laughs> yeah. The Magic crab bean. is upset at first, but when she plants and tends to the seed, a tree grows that supplies abundant fruit. The monkey then agrees to climb the tree and pick the fruit for the crab. But the monkey decides to gorge himself on the fruit instead of sharing it with the crab. Because he, he a dick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was your first mistake. <laughs> when the crab protests, the monkey ends up hurling hard, unripe fruit at her. The shock of being attacked like this causes the crab to end up giving birth just before she ends up dying. Oh no! Yeah. That's dramatic! Yeah, that's brutal. Uh, so the crab's offspring seek revenge on the monkey. With the help of several allies, which are what rotates in the story, basically, the allies in the original story are a chestnut, a cow dung, <laughs> so like, a poop. I just, I'm, I'm picturing these all in emoji form. <laughs> With smiling little that's eyes. That's a great way to do it, yeah. So well, everything in Japan is like sometimes stylized cute. so cute. Yeah, and, like it's a great way to look at it because we have a chestnut, a piece of poo, a bee, and then an uzu, which is a large heavy mortar. So oh, okay. these alleys, along with the crab's offspring, go to the monkey's house. The chestnut, the chestnut hides himself on the monkey's hearth. And the okay. bee in the water pail, the cow dung on the floor, and the uzu on the roof. When the monkey returns home, he tries to warm himself on the hearth, but the chestnut strikes the monkey so that he burns himself. And okay, when the good, because monkey... I thought he was going to get roasted over the open fire. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> it is Christmas, Dad. No. <laughs> Um, oh dear. Yeah, so the chestnut hits the monkey so he burns himself. Then the monkey tries to cool himself from the burn at the water bucket, but the bee stings him. He tries to run out of the house, but the cow dung makes him slip. And the yes. uzu. <laughs> I knew it. And then the, the uzu falls down from the roof, killing the monkey by crushing his heart, causing him to bleed out and die. Oh god. So, so that's the original one. Um, as I said, there's multiple versions that switch out what, like, things or what allies, I guess you call them, help out the crab. Um, I want to see cartoon versions of all of it. Just like... Oh, it's gonna get great. There's, like, a picture. <laughs> I think it's the last picture that's one of the... Oh, I don't have the year on it. Oh, it also depicts, like, one of the versions. Don't see it yet. Don't look at it yet. Okay. Um... <laughs> So, yeah. So there's versions about whether or not the crab or the monkey ever even die. Oh, okay. Um, one version of the story published by Andrew Lang says that the crab gathers the unripe fruit that is thrown down by the monkey, like trying to kill it, 
um, the crab gathers it up and isn't killed. Instead, the monkey leaves after this and leaves the crab for dead because she'd be unable to like go up to get more of the fruit. So all she's left with is like the unripe fruit. But she's not ripe yet. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> uh one version has the crab's children being helped by the uzu a snake a bee and arami which is kelp along with a kitchen knife because almost everyone has like an animated object um where's the little sushi guy (laughs) right so this one, it's they're helped by a knife, like a kitchen knife, which is the last picture. It's like drawn. I don't have a year for the picture, but it's like the classic Japanese like drawing. But there's just like a kitchen knife, um, <laughs> like laying on the ground, and I love it. Oh no! Um, but no, no cartoon eyes, unfortunately. No. I take it. Oh, oh um, it. yeah, it's kind of great. Oh, that's the um. Picture. So there's another version yet that has the allies said to be an amount of oil. Just an (laughs) amount. Um, Another one that has an egg instead of a chestnut. Um, And then the kelp instead of a cow dung. In that one, the egg attacks the monkey by exploding. And then the kelp then Mm -hmm. causes the monkey to slip instead of the dung. Did they put um, the egg in the microwave? Because that can happen. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, you want to make yeah. sure your robe is closed. <laughs> oh, we used to have one of those microwave egg things. Like, oh, it was, so like, it a little thing explode. into the water, and then you could put like salt and pepper, and it makes like a little. It poaches it? Egg. Basically, but it's not. It was like a little thing. It was basically like just bigger than a hard-boiled egg yeah um and you would just crack the egg into it and add a bit of water it's not the nice ones Ooh. from like tupperware that you do that make it so you could put it on like a sandwich or like a bagel or something this it was yeah. basically like a ball oh, okay but, just a quick way to like yeah hard yeah. or soft boil it nice yeah um yeah so another version um Oh, that's the same. That sentence meant to be deleted. It was like in one version of the story published by Andrew Lang. We already talked about you. Um, bloopers, bloopers. <laughs> uh, so there's a 20th century novelist. Oh God, I should have looked up how to pronounce things. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, it's, I know that's hard. It's really hard. Ryunoshuki. Akutagawa. Uh, he wrote a short Probably. story. <laughs> yeah. He wrote a short story based on the folktale in which, after avenging their mother's death by attacking the monkey, the crab children are all arrested and face the death penalty. Oh my god. The children. <laughs> Won't somebody please um, save the children? <laughs> And then, oh, okay, this is why I didn't put the other one. This is a good way to end it, too. Okay, I don't feel so bad. Uh, I can't believe I did all of these notes today and then totally forgot. (laughs) Wow. It's all a blur. It's all a blur. (laughs) Uh, So last, I guess, version of the story that's completely different is (laughs) when the monkey climbs the tree and takes all the persimmons the crab advises him to hang his basket of fruit from a branch. And when the monkey hangs his basket on a thin branch, the branch breaks and the basket of fruit falls. The crab quickly carries the fruit off and crawls down a hole. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh my god. The monkey decides to defecate on the crab and sticks his <laughs> buttocks down the hole. The oh, crab right over it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Squatty potty. Uh the crab quickly <laughs> shaves the monkey's bottom. Uh, <laughs> which it said literally, this is what the thing said word for word. The crab quickly shaves the monkey's bottom, which is why to this day monkeys have hairless bottoms and hair grows on crab's claws. 
Cuz <laughs> baboons or whatever. Like, yeah. I think the that's hairless, what they mean. The bare-faced <laughs> baboons. <laughs> Rafiki. <laughs> I was oh, like, okay. I to play Donkey Kong really bad. And the ones where you have to hit, there's crabs and they're hard to hit because they got their, mm. you have to hit them once yeah. to get their stupid little claws to go in. Otherwise you can't, you can't mm. get rid of them. Damn. Yeah. That was very much, I, I know why they, like, I play all the Japanese video games. We bought Rain Super Mario Galaxy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and she loves Donkey Kong and it's, it's like okay, this is where they came up with all of these ideas of monkeys fighting yeah. crabs. And- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently there is a big like history in Japan of like crabs and monkeys, or monkeys versus like other animals, and crabs versus other animals. So interesting. Maybe yeah. they're supposed to kind of represent us because you know they're I don't know close relatives. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. I I wish I could have found like actual versions of the story instead of the summaries, but I think the summaries worked out okay. But... Pardon me. I mean, yeah, I think usually original versions are quite long too. Most people yeah. have to give the summed up version if you're gonna do like this is the real Grimm's fairy tales, which we could do those too because, mm-hmm. yeah. We have they are dark. The original at my book. We have at my book at my work. We have oh, a book. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> um, and it because they're redoing like basically almost like velvety printed covers of all these books at my work. So they have That's like Frankenstein and like Sherlock Holmes and like all these ones. Oh, okay, and they look like kind of a classic. Yeah, but it's yeah, kind of like belty, like it has mm. kind of like a texture to it. And there is one that was the Grimm's Fairy Tales, and I keep wanting to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a cool version to have, for sure. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they're pretty interesting. Future yeah. episode idea. <laughs> I, I do know Cinderella, her glass slipper is supposed to catch on the stairs because the prince like wants to trap her from leaving the party because he likes her so he has the servants uh, pour tar down the stairs and then when she's running down the stairs instead of her slipper falling off her feet get stuck in the tar and it's like oh shit like oh uh, yeah how they did it in uh wasn't that how they did it in um Anna Kendrick's in the movie into oh. the woods yeah yes. i haven't seen it but she talked so. about it in her book how she had to film it and act like she couldn't pick her feet up off the stairs yeah i love into the woods it's great i should watch it into the woods. <laughs> i just <laughs> saw her talk about it and i was like oh that sounds like a pretty good you it's know, fun kind of yeah it's amalgamation of a bunch of fairy tales or something yeah so like cinderella yeah she's yeah She's Cinderella, and yeah. then somebody's Little Red Riding Hood, and there's the one boy that's doing. Mm, is a Jack and the Beanstalk or something? And then oh, okay, somebody's doing like Rumpelstiltskin. There's like five of them going on at the same time. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, see, I like that. I like that. And they all like. And all of them are going into the woods and they're like crossing paths with each other and like all this stuff is going on. And then Meryl Streep is the evil witch like behind it all. Oh yeah, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. I could see that. It's like <clears throat> Angelina Jolie is Maleficent. That's pretty good yeah, too. Yeah, I like those. Mm-hmm. Well, that was really fun. <laughs> yes. I laughed more than I thought I would. <laughs> I was like typing these up and I was like, oh. I was like, oh my God, this is just getting weirder. And then I was like, there's a lot of variations. And then I was like, ah, clams peeing. Now it's fish peeing. Hairless monkey butt. <laughs> yeah, hairless monkey butt. I'm like, I don't know. The obsession but- with the butts and the 
toilets will get to it uh, a little bit <laughs> yeah. it's weird i don't know <clears throat> i get it it's a vulnerable place like yeah i'd get scared i'd be watching x-files with with my sister and then i'd be like going to the bathroom and whatever's on the tv it's like <gasps> they had needles going on in their latest case well needles are gonna come up through the toilet get me in the butt like i would just like think these stupid thoughts that made no sense i'm more afraid of like being in australia and like you'd have a snake or like a giant bug or spider well, in the toilet that's more likely to actually happen than needles. yeah so that is that's a more rational fear yeah oh well we'll come back and you can tell me all about it <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, go pee guys before <laughs> we get yeah. to this next section. Get get a top up. <laughs> go yeah, pee. get it now. <laughs> we are back. Yay! We are so back. Uh we hope you went to the bathroom and it was mostly uneventful. <laughs> In a good way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're going to start by going to the Howling Unaki Inu, Inunaki Tunnel. That's probably mm -hmm. what I am. Sure. The only thing I had pictures for, <laughs> other than the car. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, this tunnel is supposed to be one of the most haunted places in Japan. Oh, it looks That's creepy. <laughs> Yeah, this is what it looks like nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the Inunaki Mountain Pass, Fuyamacho, Miyawakashi, Fuko Fukoku Prefecture. Why do they have so many town names <laughs> and regions? <laughs> All right. Um... And according to Dangerous Roads website, mm -hmm. the tunnel is located in the Mayawaka town of Fukuoka Prefecture through a mountain into remote areas. The actual scenery is scary. The tunnel is curvy and less than 100 meters long. <laughs> okay. A windy, dark, creepy tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it used to lead to a village, but Oh, okay. a little bit yeah i have a little bit of a history on it but part of the history that makes it haunted is um from a story that happened in good old 1988 the year of my birth <laughs> <laughs> um it's not a happy story though uh oh. in december actually when does this come out the ninth yeah Mm -hmm. So this happened on December 7th, which is my friend Jill's birthday. Hi, Jill. You sometimes listen. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, when they found the burned body of a factory worker named Umayama Kuichi. Sorry. Who was only age 20. Um, oh, found wow. at the mountain pass. Yeah. And it, yeah, that was basically the short version of the story was that he was found there and a group of youths are soon arrested for the crime. That's sucky. Youths. Oh, it's are you very you? bad. Because uh, this is like a little mini true crime case. Okay. Yeah. We know that these group of, yeah, they're like teenagers, like 16, 17 the oldest was like 19. Okay. Um, and they saw him pull up at a stoplight and approached his vehicle. And they said they needed his car to pick up some girls. So quit acting tough and get out. What? Oh my God. Yeah. 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 Losers. Carjack him like with yeah. no weapons, but just a bunch <laughs> of idiots. So he refused probably because he was like what the fuck <laughs> i don't need this shit yeah. i mean he probably regretted that unfortunately he managed to break free briefly and ran down the road trying to get help from any other motorists but nobody 
really was there or noticed him or stopped to help. Okay. So they recaptured him and continued to beat and batter him bloody. Jeez. Yeah. They tried to kill him first by throwing him off of the Kanda port. I don't know. I, they're near a dam. And then you got this tunnel. So I'm not sure if this is part of the dam or a bridge or something. Oh, okay. But yeah, it said that they tried to get him over this, but he was... They were unsuccessful getting him over the edge because he was clinging to the fence part for dear life. Well, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then one of the youths was supposed to have, or said to have hesitated at this time and been like, okay, what are we really going to do this? We don't need to do this. And then one of the other ones was like, no, we're all in this together and that, like, we have to kill him so we don't get in trouble. We don't want to get found out. Oh my. So stupid. Uh, I know. What then, is this? Flashback to last week's <laughs> Yeah, it's like... Then don't steal the dude's car in the first place. Like, Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they put him in his own trunk, then beat him some more with rocks and whatever they could find. And he escaped a second time, said the one source there, but they pretended they wouldn't hurt him. So I guess he came back out or something oh. like that. Which just sounds horrible. Then they tried to dump him into the dam, the Rikimaru Dam. But ultimately, that didn't work either, so they burned his body after dousing him with gasoline. Jesus. Yeah. I feel so bad for that guy. Like, I know, I'm like, wow. I feel bad for it not giving a trigger warning that this one was just about to get to, like, a brutal crime case uh, but it's it's haunted if that if this is like this really happened then yeah there's some bad juju there yeah that's awful yeah um he was found to have died from the blood loss um cause you know they lit him on fire but he wasn't quite dead yet he was still running around screaming burning and Jeez. they just ran away. So they had to come back after to really make sure he was dead. Because they oh were such God. cowards. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I not reporting that very fairly? <laughs> I can't do it. No, they are cowards. They're like terrible. <sighs> yeah. There's no sympathy for them. And sorry, but anytime I hear the word youths... Um, <laughs> I cannot help but think. Have did you ever watch New Girl? Yes, it makes me think of New Girl too. Cause Schmidt. are you are you the youth from the statistics? <laughs> like he's supposed to. He's like in his twenties, and everyone's youths. Youth. Are you are you the youths from the statistics? <laughs> Schmidt's great though. Oh. Yeah, one afternoon when I was sick, I literally, for like a couple hours, just watched compilations of funny moments from New Girl, and was like, and that was in every <laughs> single one of them, and I was like, yes. <laughs> Same with when he's trying to pick their daughter up oh. from daycare, and they're like, like, where is she? And they're like, a man came, and it was like, it was like, a white man! It was like, of course it's a white man! Something, I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, later seasons, deep cut. <laughs> but that's I, a, that's that's got some good actors in it. Like those those are some funny people. It took me a bit to get into <laughs> it, but because I yeah. don't really like Zoe Deschanel, so I didn't yeah, think even I would the character like it. can be. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, the rest of them, it was just too funny. Yeah, Schmidt and Nick, like just so funny they're hard to resist <laughs> they do that crazy drinking game that reminds me of like Calvin and Hobbes's whatever murder ball he used to play or I can't remember but theirs is what is it something American <laughs> and it's 
Yeah. They're I were, like, tried drinking to... and looking it up lava. and there's no actual rules or layout of what the game is or explanation no nah, that would just so. take the fun out of it <laughs> but like but i would you want to play it and then it's like there's nothing there's no way to play it because like nobody knows what it is to me it's like they took a game like that sociable card game where you can like assign you know, you drink one for an ace, or you can drink two mm. for a two, but then you could take the um, face cards and, like, you could, it, like, if somebody gets that, they can assign a different rule. I imagine it, like, evolves something like that where they're like, yeah. And then they add a rule, and then they add a rule. <laughs> you get a rule. I just used to love watching it because they're like, <laughs> playing like the floor is lava and then they're like being yeah. presidents and presidents wives and it just made no sense yeah they're doing shots they're doing shots off encyclopedias i don't know <laughs> yeah. screaming about presidents <laughs> making costumes and <laughs> seems so fun i want to play it i know oh yeah not fun things that's right that's what we were trying to avoid yeah. So basically they did that and then they went to a bar and bragged about it and they were overheard heard overheard. <laughs> so the good news is they were arrested soon after and all found guilty. Good. They were stupid from start to finish. Wow. Ooh, yeah. It's brutal. Um, and it also said that the word Inunaki means dog bark. <laughs> I love how it just dog started with bark. that and then doesn't go on with that thought at all. <laughs> yeah, I ran into that a few times when I was reading something. and <laughs> You're like, oh, this is translated to English. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, that stuff is funny, though. Yes. Yeah. English translations. I love it. It said, the tunnel is no longer in use and after many trespassers the tunnel is now sealed with concrete blocks. So that's why it looks all sealed up. <laughs> okay. It looked like you still might be able to get around them. I know in some of the pictures it wasn't all the way to the yeah. top. It looked like you could maybe climb, although it wouldn't be comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Um, the tunnel was the setting for a new Japanese horror movie called Howling Village, and after the movie, the tunnel suddenly became a tourist hotspot, even even crowded even during the pandemic. End quote. <laughs> Howling Village. Gotta Google this. Yeah, so... It sounds familiar for some reason. Oh, really? Yeah. So the thing is that there might- there was a village nearby because i was like okay so they explained the tunnel but they didn't explain why it's called like there's village and stuff and mm -hmm. then it said on wikipedia according to historical records written during the edo period oh there it is again <laughs> yeah the real inunaki village and then it gives the coordinates officially referred to as in an inunakidani village was established by a dispatch group of the Fukuoka Domain in 1691. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Bune Shinozaki was appointed as the village headman. The village's sources of income were producing ceramic products and steel manufacturing. Um, a coal mine was established here later, and a castle called Inunaki Gobakan was founded in 1865 under the recommendation of Kato Shizo. I was just trying to understand what happened to the village, so that's why yeah. this is a little bit of its history. I looked up the movie, and that's not the one I thought it was. Oh, okay. So I'm trying to figure out which one I was confusing it for, because that was a great movie. I'm, like, and scrolling now, through my letterbox. <laughs> It, it wasn't like howling to do with like werewolves or anything. <laughs> no, like it was 
like set in a little village. I can picture the cover of it. That's why I'm trying to find it. But okay. Like I said, so many good horror movies from there. Um, so what it said was in April 1889, due to the introduction of the town and village system, Inanakidani was integrated into the nearby Yoshikawa village. Yoshi! <laughs> Which over the years merged with other areas, eventually creating the city of Miyawaka. Miyawaka. The site of Inukandani was submerged in 1986 due to the construction of the Inunaki Dam, completed in 1994. And residents of the village were real, like, relocated to Wakita. Wakita. Oh, okay. That's literally Akita with a W in front Wakita? of it. Wakita? That's cool. Yeah. Akita, like my dog, who's a Japanese. Well, he's an American Akita, technically, but... There, or there's Japanese Akitas, and I think they're the OG. <laughs> what do they look like? I'm gonna Google Japanese Akitas. Oh my god, they have like slightly pointier noses, like bit of a like Fenrir already kind of has a bear face, but like oh my god, they're so like, cute. <laughs> it looks like Henry Cavill's dog. What kind of dog does Henry Cavill have? An Akita. Is it an Akita? An- Yes, I believe his is a, his might be a Japanese Akita, and mine's an American. Because, yeah, their noses are different. I love Bear. I know Cavill Akita. Yeah, and it's named, it's named after. He's an American Akita. Okay, he's is an American Akita. Well, that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly what Fenrir is. I didn't know they were the same dog, type of dog. His is so much, yeah. like, floofy. Fenrir looks so skinny. Yeah, yeah, I've seen floofier ones, and, like, when you put the collar on them, it stops their, mm-hmm. I, uh, I call it his ruff from sticking out so much, so then they don't look fair. as floofy around the face, too. Yeah. They are so cute. Oh, love, adorable. Oh, I know. I love dogs, like, in that family, and then, like, the huskies, too, like, because these dogs are definitely snow dogs. Like, yeah. My dog be sitting outside in the snow today, even though it's... <clears throat> like minus 24 celsius <laughs> yeah it's pretty brutal yeah sorry burp, burp, burp. i'm still what trying to find this dog's name it's it's named stupid. after superman kai no what is superman's <sighs> sorry is this gonna distract me? um what is superman's alien name again <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But Cal. His, yes, it? his dog's name is Cal, named after Cal L, which is Superman's name. Okay, yeah, Cal L. That's what that was just gonna bug me. <laughs> okay, so the village there was a village, and there really was a village called Inunakidani, and then it was uh um, washed away during like after the construction of the Inunaki yeah. Dam like the village was relocated so the, then up sprang the urban legend about it after that um, and that goes that when the dam was under construction the people whose homes would su- were soon to be underwater were being told to evacuate from the area and go live somewhere else basically <laughs> yeah but it said that some villagers refused to leave their homes, and so they were tied to them inside them instead and left oh to gro- drown. That's awful. Like common criminals. I think, th- and I hope that's not true, but I think that's the urban legend part. Uh, that's so creepy. I don't like that. No. I mean, people do that when they say, like, a hurricane's coming, people start tying themselves to shit. I know, so. there's always those people that refuse to leave. Yeah, there's a fire, they're like, I don't want to go. you like, but you kind of have to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know, some people stayed behind, I think, in Katrina and place, helped out in places where mm. people might not have been able to leave. <laughs> 
crazy stuff. Yeah. I'm still I'm still trying to find this stupid movie. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've I seen wonder, too many movies. This is bugging me. So many horror movies too, right? Yeah. I don't remember any of them. I'm like, have we seen this? This is what I say to Pat all the time. Have we watched this? <laughs> well, that's why I do this, because right when I start watching a movie, I'll log it, and then be, sometimes I'm like, I have seen this before. Oh, this is me and listening it... to podcasts lately. Oh, wait, this story sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes it's just because I've heard it on a different podcast, so then that really fucks with you. Because you're like, did I listen to this before, or just this story? Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So, even if that didn't happen, there was other stuff that really did happen um, in the area. Like, a married couple jumped off the dam on January 1st, 1996. Jeez. Um, Romeo and okay. Juliet. Yeah, which it's kind of surprising neither of us decided to do anything with the suicides forest the suicide forest I yeah I I think I've watched too many movies about that place so yeah, yeah I do feel like it's pretty known um, yeah it's if you guys don't know it is it is in Japan and a, a lot of suicides do happen there it is pretty self explanatory unfortunately yeah but very sad so I think maybe that's why, yeah, I went in a different direction, too. (laughs) But, yeah, this was a a couple that fell, that jumped. There was also a 64-year-old man who was killed in 2000 and dumped into the dam. And the dam, the bridge next to the dam is also a known suicide spot and high, heavy traffic car crash spot. Or maybe not heavy traffic, but high car crash spot. Hmm. So it's just like a whole bad area. Yeah. (laughs) Also, there's a phone in the little phone booth there at the dam. And it's said to ring every night at 2 a.m. And if you should be so bold as to answer it, then you'll be locked inside the booth and drowned just like the villagers did right there in the phone booth. No, that's creepy. Yeah, that's some like Oh, I don't like that. No, I don't either. <laughs> I'm like, ugh. So does water get in there with you like a magic trick gone wrong or what? Right, and it's just in the phone booth, like slowly filling up. That's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all why the road is now closed and the tunnel is all sealed. Gross. Um, Then we had something that was just called the Red Room Curse, which is very short and not so sweet. Yes, why is there always a Red Room? The Red Room is that bad place. Red Room. (laughs) Red Room. (laughs) I had to do it. (laughs) I didn't even think of that. But uh, Black Widow, that's where they do all the training for the Black Widows. Oh, I figured out what I thought. The thing was <laughs> called. You? It's called the wailing. That's why I was very like howling. Oh. It's called the wailing. Okay. Uh, it and says it was a good? St- yeah, it was very good. It says a stranger <laughs> arrives in a little village and soon after a mysterious sickness starts spreading. A policeman is drawn into the incident and is forced to solve the mystery in order to save his daughter. It was a good Ooh. movie, but it's 156 minutes. It's like two and a half hours long. All right. But like all the reviews were really good. Um, And I can't remember if I watched. I'm sure I had to download it or something. But yeah, it was really good. It's like a. Maybe it's on Shudder. (laughs) Maybe the like sickness that goes through. Everybody is like kind of like a. Almost like a zombie type thing. Okay. Yeah. Like along that kind of line. So <clears throat> it was good. It was very long though. But good. That's okay. We're long, but we're good. In, in fact, <laughs> we're so, let's say, loquacious 
um, oh, yeah. or chatty that our Spotify was telling us that we had recorded more than 909 or 99% of the other podcasters in our category. Yeah. <laughs> With over 5,000 minutes of content. That means we're in the top 1% of podcasts for like the minutes. The length. <laughs> it, it like tr- it's probably like true crime podcasts. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. For like oh, the year God. though. Means we had more minutes. We were in the top 1% of the amount of minutes of our content for 2022. And that's so you're only... welcome. And that was, at first I was like, why is it only saying 41 episodes? And I was like, oh, because it was just this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we did. Amazing. I mean, we'll be coming up to two years. So does that mean we have like. Know. If it said we had 5,000 and something minutes, does that mean we have, like, probably just under 10,000 minutes? Including Patreon? Probably. Ah. (laughs) Somebody quick add up a- 25,600. Quick, somebody add up the length of all of our episodes. Oh Mm -hmm. my god. And then- An app for that. (laughs) <laughs> and our page and our patreon well technically anchor anchor would tell us most of them we could add them up yeah uh, yeah yes but by the time this comes out speaking of patreon we should be able to check there for a special guest yeah <laughs> it's a surprise i won't be in it surprise. but I could let you listen to it, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, you gotta do what you could do. As yeah. other podcasters said, Kelsey's throat got ripped out by a demon this last month. <laughs> we didn't have a lot we could do. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> felt that way, it and I still, Sorry. still, I can, like, feel it in my lungs, and, like, yeah, my throat <laughs> still feels weird and then my ears are still a little off um yeah yeah but getting there this last week i started feeling quite a bit better so it's no joke (laughs) yeah i know it's wild (laughs) but i'm excited tell tell me about this red room the red room the red room It uh, probably has several versions, so it said, but (laughs) this one's very simple because most often it's just a computer pop-up that uh, pops up on your screen, says, do you like, like, like? blank, (laughs) dot, 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 whatever. (laughs) It does not finish. And then when you try and close this annoying little pop-up ad, it just reappears right away. Oh, God. Like those worst, like in the early 2000s and late 90s with the internet pop-ups. Click, 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 click. And they're just like... Like 72 layers. Yeah. You see them. Yeah, on old shows. So it's like, what do they always do? It's the... They're opening something and then it's like, poop, 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 like all across their screen. And it's like 52 ads of like porn. It's like a snake. (laughs) (laughs) And it's all these porn things oh, yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah um, so yeah it starts out with like do you like and then you try and get rid of it and it comes up and says do you like the red room <laughs> this sounds like, like salad room? fingers it's like oh creepy pasta i don't know where he started from but there's so he's yeah. the a weird green guy and he's what does he have? Like rusty spoons for fingers or something? That's why they call them salad <laughs> fingers. Sorry, but okay. Yeah, there's weird things. If you if you look up salad fingers, there's stuff about him and like blood and like all this weird. So it's very like creepa past it e like yeah character kind of thing. He's but there just... was it's back with like that um 
stupid unicorn that would go on those adventures in YouTube, like, early 2000s. <laughs> those annoying, like, Kevin the Unicorn or some shit videos. Oh my god, I don't know if I was uh, in that algorithm at that time. <laughs> Might have been a bit there. too old at the time for it, but... Uh, yeah. I love it. I was gonna say, it sounds like a <laughs> spinoff of Edward Scissorhands creepy cousin <laughs> i i will quickly google trash for cousin. you <laughs> i couldn't remember okay. his name and i was like rusty spoon blood fingers and i was like salad fingers <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah this oh, no. oh no he's just got like weird fingers <laughs> they always have oh and he hands. played with like dead dogs and stuff yeah, oh, this God. is him. Very like creepy pat, creepy pasta like guy. He's got like weird fingers. Oh, uh, he froze it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Big buggy eyes. Very. Yeah. Simple yeah. drawing. <laughs> OG Slender Man, salad fingers. Okay. Yeah, they do have a similarity to them. Now I have to see. Hold on. If it is Kevin the Unicorn. Yeah. What? Kevin the Unicorn. Oh, no, it's okay. not Kevin the Unicorn. Never. Never Kevin. I don't know what that one was, but there was, like, stupid... It was, like, an episodic, like, YouTube thing somebody did of, like, shittily animated things of, like... <laughs> This unicorn and his friends, and all I remember is at one point they're like trying to cross a bridge and they all die. Oh, I remember re- watching some weird cartoons on something called like JoeCartoon.com. It was like frog in a blender kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, like, no, this is all on like early YouTube. Oh, god, that sounds like a scary place. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this thing pops up. It does. And then it asks if you like the red room. And then no. it just starts the whole screen red. And it scrolls by with a list of the curse's victims. Oh, that's creepy. I know this one could and did become a movie. Should yeah. and did become a movie. <laughs> a short film. Okay. Um, I mean, it's very short. That's all that happens because yeah. then you feel the hairs on your neck rise as you feel someone just watching you and then you just slip into unconsciousness to be found dead on the floor by whoever next comes to your room. Oh, okay. Yeah. I might have <laughs> seen a similar movie. It said that a short movie came out called The Red Room Curse in 2016. So I think it was literally a, sh- a short film. Maybe. Oh, I d- definitely felt so bad that I watched. But. I could see there being something similar to maybe. Like there's like there was... ones, ones where there technology was... is the thing that can yeah. infect you. And you have to like cover all the windows and everything. Like or that episode of that. Fringe. <laughs> her, um, right on time <laughs> her sister's daughter what's her name oh was, olivia's niece? yeah yeah olivia's oh. niece it's staying with her and it's that Never. one with the laptop that like pop up or whatever isn't it oh yeah it's very much like the ring there's playing this video game and yeah it's very vr but then something's like really out to get you in it yeah Yeah. that one was creepy Mm -hmm. because you're like yeah your kid's like playing something and you're like oh that could kill you get away from that screen (laughs) yeah um and then also apparently it had uh when i was searching up the red room curse to see if there was any more info (laughs) Yeah. It came up that there was a Spotify, there was a song. <laughs> oh, I guess it seems like there's always a song or a band name. Or I've been finding a lot of them lately. What with yeah. Whaley and Fifty Two, and <laughs> yeah, you have to go back and watch Mysterious Oceans if you don't know what we're talking about. 
watch. Yeah. What are we talking about? We're a podcast. <laughs> you can't watch us unless you go to Patreon. Um, can't watch it. Well, you can watch other videos, but not episode videos yet. Oh, no, we haven't recorded any full episodes yet. To me, that I'll watch people's videos of their full episodes if they have it on, like, YouTube or something, but... Yeah. You might not always jump at their Patreon just to watch the videos. I used to for Wine and Crime, and then I was like, eh, they went up to $5. Eh. <laughs> yeah, I canceled all my Patreon stuff. Yeah. I yeah. like to support some people, but depends who it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, the song came out. It was by Filmy Ghost. <laughs> so... You know, big name. Big name. And it was among a playlist of Japanese horror tales, and one of them was called No Face. And I didn't no. look into that at all. You're welcome. <laughs> Another Fringe episode. Oh, they have the creepiest they, ghost They lose, names like, their orifices. Oh, yeah. Oh. They definitely do. Them and like so, Japanese yes, people having no faces. Sorry, I I was hearing what you're saying when they um, they have yeah their, they lose yeah, their, their mouth, mouth and eyes. Yeah, they just see in it. the the new Wednesday series, it's Wednesday Adams. Oh, my brother's been have, watching that. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good. I liked it. Oh, um, I'm definitely gonna check it out. They have for their school of outcasts that they have. They have, um. I can't remember. They call them the faceless, or maybe they don't, like, say them. But they're the same Ew. thing. They have no eyes and, like, no nothing. It's basically just, like, smoothed over. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So they have no but mouth, no eyes, around. no nose. Yeah. They're just at the school, and you're like... Like, how? <laughs> it's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, breathe. <laughs> yeah. And I found out in, like, behind the scenes thing that they did it with prosthetics. It wasn't CGI'd on, like, after. Because we were talking about, yeah, when oh. we were, like, doing our intro thing. And she, um, Jenny Ortega that plays um, Wednesday, she's like, yeah, we turned around and we're like, what are those? Oh, my God, they're so awesome. And she's like, you could see them. And she's like, they became obsessed with them because they were, like, so weird. And they're basically shown in, like, two shots of the entire show for, like, two seconds each shot okay <laughs> yeah but Wait, did you yeah she said they okay. had like the full prosthetics must have been done they must not have done it with cgi ew how could you which breathe? is creepy yeah exactly how would you breathe in that oh, although you should see some of the get-ups they wear in fucking mass singer they don't look like they can breathe in it and they get <laughs> alone they can hardly walk sometimes <laughs> yeah we guessed right on that tonight. Anyway. Yeah. I've only ever seen two episodes. So I know, I know. Um, wait, who? You said who plays Wednesday? I thought it was a different Jenna. Girl. Jenna Ortega? Her name is? I thought it was the one from Parks and Rec and stuff. No. Uh, Aubrey Plaza? No, she's not in What? Right that's not Aubrey Plaza. Have I not really watched a trailer yet? I don't think so. Yeah, it's she's like 16 <laughs> in high school. Does she look like Aubrey Plaza? I feel like not I'm going really. crazy. Well, she would make a good Wednesday. She's just not 16, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Fair enough. I haven't actually looked it up yet. I just assumed from seeing like three second clips or it advertised uh, to me on my Netflix <laughs> uh, yeah. that I knew who it was and apparently I don't. That's uh, funny. Okay. This next one is also a curse. So mm -hmm. there's your segue. It's a cursed <gasps> poem. <laughs> a cursed poem. Wow. Yeah. It is called Tamino's Hell. Um, okay. Yeah. Are you going to read it? Is this like uh, Macbeth? We don't say Macbeth in the theater. The play is cursed. Yeah. Yeah, because it is like, you're not supposed to read it out loud, but 
Oh no! We'll post it in the episode description. Oh my god! That seems worse somehow. <laughs> Read this without knowing what it is. <laughs> but no, yeah, it is. It's one that uh, I think I read that some YouTuber had read it on their thing. And all they said was that they felt funny. And this article person was like, but they probably said that just to get more likes. And I was like, well, <laughs> or they had I don't... something bad to eat for lunch. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want you to curse yourself, though. <laughs> okay, but no, it's not as maybe got as much cred as the the Scottish play, as they call okay. it. <laughs> um, more of a Bloody Mary. Kind mm. of. They said the first one to die after reading it was a little girl and the poem's origin is traced back to the author of it Saijo Yasso I am sorry an author of poetry who is known for children's nursery rhymes and popular song lyrics and it came out (laughs) in a collection of poems called Sakin in 1919 Okay, so it's more than 100 years old, at least. Oh my god, don't say that. That's hard to believe, because 2019 was yesterday. <laughs> right. Um, the rumors are that he wrote it at age 27, after the, love of a, after the loss of a loved one, his father, or possibly his sister. Who knows? But Somebody. Somebody. (laughs) We do know that's who wrote it, anyway. (laughs) Yeah. But the legend goes that it was written by an actual young man named Tamino, and that his parents were none too pleased about that fact, as it was very grim and gruesome. Um, So they were so frightened of him that they locked him in the basement and ignored him until he starved to death. What? But that's the legend around the poem so you know okay. take all that with a grain of salt because it's it's That's so by creepy gentleman. i know um so that is what they say caused his angry spirit to imprint on the poem and that's what latches on to it if you are to read it Or Mm -hmm. also, I read he was possibly angry because he was an ill child stuck in a wheelchair and, like, very unhappy with the world. Okay. That's fair. (laughs) I don't know. It's an either-or situation. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, I had, like you, you know, just a common summary of it. Or... An interpretation, if you will, on one from one website, but mm, yeah, it said, <laughs> yeah, the meaning of the poem is open up to interpretation rather. But the most common summary is that a boy named Tamino is in love with his younger sister and loses his soul. Okay, <laughs> with the loss of his soul, Tamino descends into hell, which may be a metaphor for war. his older sister encourages him to win the war as she spits up blood yeah I okay saw i saw that in the first couple of lines of it that i read mm. um <laughs> his younger sister sister does the same while spitting up fire tamino presented to still be young and innocent throws his life away for the cause He cries for his younger sister as he travels through the seven valleys of hell. Tamino eventually reaches the eighth level, which is the most painful. He suffers more with each passing level. There are also certain items on Tamino's clothing and different hints throughout the poem that relate the story back to the battlefield of World War II. The story ends with Tamino dying in battle, never to return to his family. Well, that's depressing, like, all around. Oh, yeah. Doesn't make you want to read it? No. No. Yeah, it does seem dark, like, Metallica songs that are about people 
coming home from the war all paralyzed. You like listen to the lyrics, you're like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <sighs> um... A 1974 movie took much inspiration from the poem as it happens. The director was Teriyama Shuji, and it was called Den En Ni Shisu, or Pastoral to Die in the Countryside, aka Pastoral Hide and Seek. <laughs> okay. Those seem yeah, the, completely the unrelated. Yeah, I don't know why there's two different kind of. English variations or translations. They do that in some, <laughs> like, some countries' movies get released under different names. Oh, yeah. That yeah. just makes sense. Sound familiar. It's not but. too common, but, yeah, there's been a few times when you're, like, looking up a movie and you're like, this has a different uh, name. Like, when it actually gets released in, like, Canada. Okay, so, it made me yeah. think of Hide and Seek, which I did like as a movie. Yes, that was one of my favorite movies for a long time. We watched it in high school, like, in class, as an assignment. Which, like, why? Wait, but. what? <laughs> yeah. Is this recent? How old? Oh, oh. no, I was thinking oh. the... Hide and one. Seek? Oh. Yeah, Robert De Niro and... Oh, that one. the creepy one. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, maybe it's called. Okay, maybe I'm thinking it's called Hide and Seek, but it's actually called Ready. Is it Ready or Not? Yeah. The one. horror movie, but then she has to play Hide and Seek with the family yeah. she married into, but. Yeah, that's all Ready or Not. To kill her. Damn it. I always think it's called Hide and Seek. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's a good thing, yes. Yeah. So, sorry, people. I'm so <laughs> confusing everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so this is why then after the director passed away fairly early at 47 from cirrhosis of the liver, they blamed the poem. <laughs> <laughs> wow. For yeah, just, like, yeah. drinking heavily? Not, not his drinking, no. <laughs> yeah. It's gotta be the poem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally the play that's cursed. It's like, uh, I don't think so. Um, but rumors still swirled of some college students passing away after reading it and other incidents like injuries, like falls. Oh, sorry. Um, permanent loss of voice was a weird one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Almost been there. No. I know, I was like, that's probably going to be, like, triggering <laughs> for you. Throw in loss and... of hearing, eyesight. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, what will I have left? I'll, well, I'll just, I'll just well, be, like, fucking just... Helen Keller, like, over here. Oh, like... no. Jesus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, but they, these are what they're saying, too. They're like, oh. They're having the worst time, anyone that reads this poem. Uh, all of the events were said to be after the people read the poem aloud, daring to defy its curse. And according to a website, Indie 88, in Japan in the 80s, there was a trend of filming friends who were intent on reading the poem out loud. The trend became popular and reportedly there were no consequences to reading it out loud most of the time. And, but all it said was that nowadays it might occur at random. However, in Japan, it's usually still avoided, especially by the more superstitious, which as a country they tend to be, I guess. So I, I do have it. Hold up. It's not that long. Yeah. Um, seemed like it. There was a few we talked, I talked about even back in uh, Death Omens episode. <sighs> Oh my there god. There was some stuff about Japan and like not turning on or not having a room a fan going in your room when you sleep oh, because yeah. if you fall asleep the fan will like cut you or something and Yeah 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 because yeah. I was like that's like <laughs> that's really narrowing down our options for white noise at night. <laughs> we yeah. like to have a fan sometimes. <laughs> Damn, what a call I used to I used to not be able to sleep without a fan. Like I 
couldn't I always had to have a fan or I was gonna sleep so terribly for almost my entire life and yeah gotta have that white noise hey right because my ears were like so bad and I could hear so little I couldn't hear my fan at all oh. for like three weeks every night oh, and okay now I actually can't sleep with my fan on because it's too loud. It like keeps me up. So I I like sleep and it's like dead silent. Oh my I don't know. God. It it like cured me of <laughs> like requiring a fan to sleep at night. That's pretty crazy because you like grow yeah. up with something one way and you're like, I need my yeah. house to be like that quiet. Or if you grow up in like a louder house, you're like, I can fall asleep through anything. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Like ever since I was a little kid, needed to have even just the like clip little fan going, like just something. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. It's been weird because the last few times I've tried to turn it on, I told my parents this too. Like, even though I like my hearing isn't a hundred percent again, it's like so some sounds are louder. Like I can hardly stand to like listen to my car radio at the same volume I used to because it seems so loud to me. Oh, and like other things that used to seem so quiet in my house now seem so loud to me because I just got used to like everything being so so muffled. Isn't that crazy? Like, yeah. So there's been, I've been getting like headaches and stuff for a few days at work when it's been like really noisy at work because I'm just like not used weird. to it just being so loud. Yeah, it's been yeah, weird. It's like you had your ear, eardrums blown out or something like yeah. after an explosion and then all of a sudden you're like having to get it back again. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. That. Everything seems like louder. Oh. I got used to just being in silence. <laughs> and then we had issues where I was like, wait, I sounded so loud. And you were like, well, I didn't know because I could hardly hear anything. Right? We're all yeah. Like, oh, we hopefully the audio has been okay. But <laughs> yeah. Oh. But the funny thing enough was that the author of the poem actually lived to be a rather ripe old 78 years old. So. Oh. Well, he clearly lived... he never read it out loud himself. <laughs> he lived 51 years after writing the poem and he was known to have read it out loud numerous times. So it might be a little bit debunked. <laughs> Maybe he's just immune to it because he wrote the poem. Well, I'll risk it, okay? Because oh now you all want to hear it. <laughs> if if Alana dies, I promise <laughs> we will post this on YouTube. The, <laughs> the YouTuber didn't die. Someone else read it. This is just the, the rough English translation. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but, okay. Elder sister vomits blood. Younger sister's breathing fire. While sweet little Tamino just spits up the jewels. <laughs> sorry. Okay. I never oh. got poems. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They're so... I don't know. I like some of them. But yeah, it's... It was like it's never my thing. I don't like deciphering and analyzing stuff. Like, that yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, in a way, lyrics are poetry. But yeah, it is a we it's like a I would pr I prefer reading stories. <laughs> yeah. Rather than these little stanzas. Um, all alone does Tamino Tamino go falling into that hell. A hell of utter darkness without even flowers. Hmm. Is Tamino's big sister the one who whips him? The purpose of the scourging hangs dark in his mind. Lashing and thrashing him, ah, but never quite shattering. One sure path to Avicii, I think, the eternal mm -hmm. hell. Into that blackest of hells, guide him now, I pray, to the golden sheep, to the nightingale. How much did he put in that leather pouch to prepare for his trek to the eternal hell? Spring is coming to the valley, to the wood, to the spiraling chasms. Chasms? Chasms? Chasms. Chasms. Okay. I was sorry, as you were listening things, I just went to the window, to the wall, to the wall. 
drips to the sweat like drips off my balls. Yeah. And all I think uh, is that Betty White and Sandra Bullock around the campfire. I love the proposal. Oh, they yes, do that. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds, right, 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 right. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, Betty White. Those are some <laughs> funny people. That's all I could think when you were listing, <laughs> listing things in that way. <laughs> We laugh because we're scared. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chasms. Chasms of the blackest hell. The nightingale in her cage, the sheep aboard the wagon, and tears well up in the eyes of sweet little Tamino. Sing, O oh nightingale, in this vast, misty forest. He screams. He only misses his little sister. His oh. wailing. Fuck yeah. the big sister. I don't care about her. And wasn't he fucking one of them? Like, whoa. Yeah, it was the Mercy. little sister. That's why he misses her. Oh, twin zest. Um, no. Gross. His wailing desperation echoes throughout hell. A fox peony opens its golden petals. Down past the seven mountains and seven rivers of hell, the solitary journey of sweet little Tamino. If in this hell they be found, may they then come to me, please. These sharp spikes of punishment from Needle Mountain. Not just on some empty whim is flesh pierced with blood red pins. They serve as hellish signposts for sweet little Tamino. That's it. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> Eerie. But anyway, we have some funnier stuff to end it on because we have a couple of toilet loving demons. I was gonna say, where was the toilet? Where was the toilet? I had to spoiler you and tell you that it was coming. In case you were gonna cover them. Um, <laughs> Alright, the first one's called Akamanto or Red Cape, Red Vest or Ake, Kami, Awai, Kami. <laughs> basically red garment <laughs> clothing yeah. person <laughs> this Japanese urban legend is about a masked spirit who wears a red cloak and who appears to people using toilets in public or school bathrooms <gasps> right. public bathroom <laughs> demon yeah per no but particularly elementary school bathrooms Ew. That, that's where they get talked about the most. <laughs> it's usually in the older or seldom used bathrooms, um, often with an older squat style toilet, because Japan. Yeah. So, like, they're in the floor, they're in line with the floor, and you squat over them, which is the correct posture for pooping, apparently. <laughs> yeah. But don't they they're have not those... all like that. Yeah. They have those in, like, Dubai or something, too, don't they? I think you can find them in many parts of Asia still. My friend Jill that does live in China, shout out Jill, uh, <laughs> has often done little picture series where she's like, oh, this is what this bathroom looks like. Like, some of them are still, yeah, the floor style, or it's not always as common to have a western toilet but if they do i think in a lot of places in japan too they have ones with fancy like bidet you know yeah. functions on the top and stuff <laughs> quite the variety <laughs> um often the fourth stall is the cursed one as the number four is associated with death oh yay um the students uh or the stories, that's what I meant to put. The stories usually involved a student who stayed late at school for one reason or another, so it's late, often in the evening. And then the student finds himself in desperate need of a toilet, and the closest one is the cursed and or actively avoided bathroom. Oh. Yet yeah, the whole school's abandoned, and that's the only one that, that's not. I know, used. they're studying right <laughs> next to it. <laughs> Um, once they finish going, they notice to their utmost horror that they are stranded on the toilet bowl. Ain't nothing on the roll. Uh, Sorry. That's from a Chili Pepper song. <laughs> it's 
it's all about being stranded on the toilet toilet bowl. <laughs> no. Some of their early work was very highbrow, I must say. <laughs> what do you do stranded on the toilet bowl? To prove you're a man, you must wipe it with your hand. Stranded. Stranded on the toilet bowl. That's the real poetry. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know. I, I never liked Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> I know. Myself. I know they're your favorite. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they're perfect, though. It's fine. <laughs> All right. If the student answers yes, okay, back up. <laughs> Sorry. That was so fun. I missed the line. Okay, so they're there. They have no toilet paper. They hear a disembodied, vo- disembodied voice say, Do you want red paper or blue paper? Red pill or blue pill, it's the Matrix! Yeah! (laughs) Do you want Neo to come and give you a square of toilet paper? (laughs) If the student answers yes, they are violently stabbed to death. Your life's blood spattering the walls. The answer was red or blue, not yes or no. (laughs) If they say yes, red, I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Who wrote these notes? (laughs) You did. The teleprompter is crazy. Um, and then your body will be drenched in blood and you appear to be wearing a red cloak, which if you remember, was one of the nicknames for this. Oh, okay. Demon. Red cloak. Then the next time a student needs to go desperately to the bathroom, they're also forced to use the nasty one. Having heard the story of the other youth, they know not to answer red when the voice asks the question or yes, because they're smarter than me. Do you want red or blue? They pick blue and are drained of their blood immediately, left blue, dead, and lifeless. What? So how do you win? Answer. No toilet paper. You kill them. (laughs) That's so gross. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes the story is that it's a serial killer who lurks in the stalls, which I was like, "Ooh, that's so a la Scream Two with Jada Pinkett Smith." She has to listen against. The stall door because she hears whispers and then they just oh, stab yeah. her right in the ear. Ugh. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, or sometimes it's a ghost, a tall figure with a sickly blue face. Some say it's a hairy yokai, uh, which is like a supernatural entity or spirit in Japanese folklore. Mm-hmm. This yokai is called a kinade. Literally Kincaid without the C. So I don't know. Kincaid? Oh, I guess so. Kincaid. Uh, who lives in the toilet and also likes to stroke people's rear end with its hand. No. <laughs> yes. That's oh. the Kincaid. Oh. So good. <laughs> don't like him. <laughs> no. Or his pal, Tuare no Hanoko san or Hanoko of the toilet. Hanako, Hanako of the toilet, who is a young girl ghost who haunts toilets, especially, you guessed it, school toilets. Moaning Myrtle. Yeah, they've got so many Moaning Myrtles, and they're so horrible. (laughs) Yeah. She's supposed to have come from the World War II era, died either by A, an air raid strike hit while she was playing hide and seek, B, murdered by a parent or stranger, or C, she killed herself as a result of bullying. Take your pick. Those are vastly different answers. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and all very sad either way. So I was just yeah. like, why does there have to be so many versions? And they're obviously popular, the legends in Japanese schools. And have bled over into the media, movies, manga, anime, video games, etc. I think I watched a movie about a haunted bathroom. That I want to it. now. Was it good? <laughs> Quick, now, go back to the letterbox list. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you and your letterbox. <laughs> yeah, it was some, like, movie, but I remember it was, yeah, it was, like, haunted 
bathroom, but the girl, I think she hung herself or something. Involved tagging. But it was, like, either... maybe from the bullying. I think it was either, like, a Japanese school or, like, an orphanage or something. Oh. Where they were, yeah. Oh, we have a horror movie called The Orphan. Yeah. But that might be a different one. (laughs) Yeah, that's completely different. All right, okay. And, like, one by one. Yeah, (laughs) one by one, like, the girls slowly were, like, getting killed by her or something. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah. All Japanese girls are creepy. <laughs> sorry, if you're a little Japanese girl, you're creepy. I'm sorry about it. I think it's the bull haircut. It's the like... long dark hair too, though. <laughs> no, I see. No. I think that's pretty. I okay, like well, it is until they're hair. crawling across the floor at you, like in the ring. <laughs> well, if it's unwashed and like nasty, matted and wet, yes. <laughs> But like ah, split ends. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, no. Their hair is gorgeous. That's true. That's true. Pin straight. Share hair. Yes. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Some days I'm jealous. I... I'm jealous of anybody that can just put their hair up in a ponytail and then wear it down again the next day. Because <laughs> my hair is curly. If I put my hair it's in a so ponytail. Curly. Then it just ruins my hair, and then I cannot wear it down again oh. until I wash it. So then it's like a big ordeal. That's so. true. I would just get a bump for a little bit. Yeah. I I had someone, an acquaintance, say they had Asian straight hair once, and I went, oh, that's a pretty good description for it, but I probably won't use it because it sounds a little <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cringy. Um, so you might want to know how to avoid this. Ghost. Yes. Wait, before you guys go, <laughs> how do we stay away from this one? She's said to be lurking in the third stall of the girls' bathrooms on the third floor. So you gotta watch out for the three with this one. Okay. And four with the other one. <laughs> so one and two and five are good. They should be. <laughs> stall five at my work is... Uh, a shower because for some reason we have a shower because we're a contact center and we have like a shower and we have like a room that has like a bed in it like we're just prepared for anything (laughs) yeah the shower is a little weird it's a little creepy i gotta say it's got a stall door just like all the other toilets so i try not to open that one or look in it or anything (laughs) yeah gross (laughs) weird i know and my friend said she saw an old Native American ghost at our work once in the bathroom, so I just... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, to avoid this one, you don't want to bloody marry her, but if you do want to do that and call her, you go up to the door of the stall, you knock three times, and you call her name. And when you open it, you might find a little girl with dark hair and a red skirt. Or just her bloody hand that grabs you. Mm. Or she turns into a lizard. A lizard? Okay. Eats you. <laughs> I guess. Eats you. I know. This Moaning Myrtle is very versatile. <laughs> and finally, she's got another little friend that you might come into contact with while you're in there. Kashima Reiku. Reiko, who's another bathroom spirit. But I'm not sure why she hangs out in the bathroom because she was apparently cut in half by a train. Oh. Yeah, that doesn't typically happen in bathrooms. No. (laughs) (laughs) But she does like to ask you where her legs are and then rip yours off when she doesn't like Oh, shit. (laughs) Then just pulls you down the toilet to hell. (laughs) And that's my segment. (laughs) Wow. Oh, I love Japan. <laughs> yeah, I was not expecting so many toilets. I have heard one or two things, but I haven't listened to a lot of people talk about ghosts from different countries in Asia. But yeah. I love that there's different podcasts coming out about that. Like there's stories with Sapphire that I heard of, who's like, she's from the Philippines. And I've heard different guests on some podcasts where they're like, in my country, we believe this. And I'm like, holy shit, I love all these different ghost 
stories from around the world and beliefs and stuff. And yeah, so cool. I'm trying to find the bathroom movie. <laughs> no, I'm just googling oh. Japanese horror movie bathroom. Oh, bathroom. okay. Because like the whole premise was mostly around the bathroom. Oh, oh my god. This is why I got letterboxed because I like literally cannot figure stuff out otherwise. And I'm like, what was that movie? And then I scroll through the like 2200 movies I've watched. Oh yeah, it's like you you have a song stuck in your head and you go to Google and people have Googled what's that song that goes la 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 Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, but how will they know? Well, next week we'll see Kelsey and she'll still be looking for it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And we will be also talking about mm, some twisty surprising or unexpected crimes yes so that should be interesting because we can that's really open i could have some fun with choosing my case for that one i know you've already chosen a case so all i have to do is choose something that's not yours (laughs) yeah basically (laughs) i found one movie that was also good i watched around the same time it's called the bridge curse oh okay that sounds like my tunnel case. No. <laughs> Four years after five students mysteriously commit suicide after taking part in a courage test on the ghost bridge in Dongu University, a reporter and a cinematographer are back to that place and try to get everything clear. So they like go there and they're, oh. if I remember correctly, like they're going to record while she walks. You're supposed to like walk backwards across the bridge. Ew. And then you basically I... get killed don't like that yeah (laughs) i've already risked enough this week i just read a curse poem yeah (laughs) go sage myself Uh, no (laughs) oh so creepy we won't record macbeth nope you know and i don't have a ouija board (laughs) no neither do i i i did get my uh, tarot cards. I want it though. And they <gasps> really? Are oh, that's beautiful. exciting. Yeah. I always have room for more sets, though. I'm sure. <laughs> I can lay them all out and take a picture or something. Okay, which deck is this? It. The it's called Phantom Wise, like the oh, um okay Phantom Wise from Alice in Wonderland. It's supposed to be based off. Um, oh. the one who created it is a, the author of The Night Circus, which I haven't read, but apparently it's a pretty popular, like, young adult book or something. I downloaded cool it. It's on my Kindle. I just haven't watched it yet. Is it a book or a show? It's a book. Oh, he said watched it yet. <laughs> no, I read it. still looking for movies. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well... Thank you for listening. <laughs> yes. We'll catch you next week. Bye. Don't forget to rate, review. Keep following us on Spotify because we loved seeing who had us in their top five and top number one podcast slots for the yeah. year. 19 of you listened to us the most. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Share it on social media if that's you. I want to see it. (laughs) Yeah, it's Prove it to me. You're not a bot. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) I know one of them's you, Mom. It's okay. You don't have to share it on Instagram. I know you don't have one. But everyone else. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Keep it cryptic. Thank you.
This has been Castles and Cryptids. You can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Breaker, Pocket Casts, and our YouTube channel. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit. On our website, you can listen to all of our episodes as well as view pictures for each of our segments. Check out our Patreon page to view all of our tiers and become a Patreon supporter today to unlock monthly bonus episodes and behind-the-scenes content. We are working on an Ask Us Anything. You can submit questions by social media or by email at castlesencryptids at gmail.com. Do you have a spooky ghost story, a creepy cryptid sighting, or a thrilling true crime tale you would like to share and have us include in a future episode? Send us your listener story by social media or by email. Please include the name that you would like mentioned. Our music is by Kobe Affair. Our logo and artwork is by Antonio Garcia. Thanks for listening!